action. I was very happy, thanks to Working Office, to watch a little bit more uh, Champions League action yesterday. I just got a little bit late for Tottenham against um, PSV. <laughs> Actually, the first thing I saw was a red card flashed for Yoris. Um, yeah, which was unmotivated tackle by him on a counter attack. I really think, uh, yeah, it was not necessary of his, but I also all think the red card was not necessary. Absolutely. So uh, I would, yeah, that was that. Tottenham was 2 1 up at that uh, point when I saw the Harlots. They actually dominated most, most of the game, were unlucky to be 1 0 down. A crazy goal, weird deflection. Uh, going, going in the turn, the game around had one, I think, a little bit unjustly um, taken away from them due to offside, but scored two others. And so, yeah, we're 2 1 up, we're pressing for the third. Unfortunately, the red card turned things around and Luke de Young with a crazy flick made it 2 2. Now, Barcelona won quite deservedly, so against Inter 2 0. Inter was only threat threatening the first 10 minutes for each half and then Barcelona took over. Rafinha of all people, the Messi replacement who played for Inter last season, scored the opening goal. I think that it was Jordi Alba who made it 2-0. Um, the draw between Tottenham and PSV it wasn't helping anything. Uh, that was the worst. Uh, that was the worst possible re result. And uh, similar to yesterday between EB and Valencia. Also, the draw was not the result that any one of these uh, two teams wanted. But yeah, Barcelona sits pretty at top of the group. They probably should, should have made a third to really seal, uh, more or less seal first place if, 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 if it was for time. But even the 2 0 is already a tall order for Inter to match. Finally, Inter lost because. They have been on a winning run where most of the games they, uh, no, no, not most, but some of the games they won, they were not the better team, especially the two in the Champions League, that they were a six points were more or less a fluke. I think if they had zero or one point, they couldn't complain either. They were really, really lucky in the Champions League. Then the game that I watched was, of course, it was a great game between Napoli and PSG. I don't know why I always mention the, the away team first. Maybe because I'm more happy. So uh, PSG, although they played in black at home, uh, I hate those German jerseys, honestly. Uh, they, are, they are so not PSG looking. And yeah, so Napoli in blue. The game was very similar in both halves, uh, except for a score in a way. PSG took the game to uh, Napoli at the beginning of both halves interesting one. Uh, Cavani had tried to really get something done, had chances, but couldn't get it really done. And then one even injured Neymar while trying to take the shot, which was very interesting given that the two of them seemingly don't get along that well, at least off the pitch. So yeah, uh, and then Napoli uh, slowly took over. Dries and Mertens hitting the bar. And then a wonderful pass by Kai Khan to Insigne, who lobs it over the goalkeeper, makes it 1-0 at halftime. Napoli could, could have, maybe should have added the second one. Uh, they were that dominant at, the, at that point. But then uh, Tuchel made a small change, uh, put three at the back instead of four, put more pressure on Napoli. In, in addition, Insigne got injured, needed to be taken off, and I think that kind of disrupted the game enough so that PSG really put it to uh, Napoli and they got the equalizer, although it was a crazy deflection. Uh, I think it was a Meunier pass in and uh, Mario Rui deflected into goal. Little was unlucky, uh, we gotta be honest about that. And so, yeah, it's 1-1 and everyone thought now nah, PSG is gonna eat Napoli live, but no, they let loose again. Uh, by the way, speaking of Mario Rui, to me, uh, he doesn't look Portuguese, he looks more Polish or Czech or whatever. He has this sort of uh, 
like broader face that I'm more associated with those countries. But yeah, it was very interesting. Anyway, so um, PSG let loose again and Napoli got again into the game. Very, very similarly as in the first half. And they got their goal. Uh, kind of a steep pass in, Areola uh, cannot really stop it, puts it right in front of Mertens and gets the second ball and in it goes. 2-1 and I really thought that Juan and Napoli will win it. I was uh, PSG, sorry, got interrupted. Um, yeah, so PSG got the equalizer and that actually keeps them alive in the group because the other game, Liverpool won 4 0 against Javena's Vesta. Salah scoring twice, they even missed the penalty by Sané, uh, where probably Sané, so Sané made up for his miss later on by scoring a fourth goal. I thought maybe they should have put in more, tried to put more because PSG put six on, on them, but yeah, they got the win, they got what needed to be done, uh, and probably the point that Napoli lost in Belgrade might end up hurting them, but you know, I think Napoli also looks good, it's PSG who is a little bit in trouble, which actually is staggering because this was the season they were supposed to win it. Yeah. Any of those three teams being eliminated and going down to Europa League is actually a really a shame and I understand when Napoli was complaining about that group because Napoli is a really strong side. Well, what else can we say? Um, the other groups, we had the result of the night with Dortmund beating Atleti 4-0 crazy result absolute crazy result uh, it was I think too high but it was a well-deserved win for Dortmund um, just when Atleti had hit the bar and was about to come back and Atleti playing in their wonderful light blue jerseys against Dortmund ah, not like I don't like it but yeah I guess they want to push that one anyway just when they were about to make a calm, Kakame Dortmund makes a second goal and then they, they mail it in and uh, give up two more is, is a shame, I have to say, but yeah, so be it. Uh, cannot really do more than that. And then uh, the other result in that group was, uh, again, one of those missed chances. Uh, the, the two losers, uh, Brugge and Monaco were playing each other 1-1. One, one. Should have been a win for Brugge. They just couldn't get it done. Uh, they just couldn't put the ball into the net. So yeah, uh, missed chance. I think Brugge seems to be the third uh, strongest team in that group, not Monaco, uh, which is surprising. Uh, but yeah, I think both of them are out of contention. So even with Atleti losing at home, I think they're still fine. And then the last uh, group was we had Porto winning in uh, Moscow against Lok. Uh, Casilla saved a save, saving penalty, they themselves converting one. I think it ended 2 0, I'm not 100% on that one. And then Schalke dominating Gala Tassaray in their home stadium which is a feat in, in itself but just cool in not getting it done. Uh, I think Galatasaray supporters should be worried, but you know, you stole a point from Schalke. That makes you probably look good. Yeah, and in that sense, that was the Champions League action. I was really happy to watch all that. I I think all three games that I saw, I mean, two and a half, I should say, because I, I didn't see most of the second half of EB against Valencia, but all of the games were great. Uh, really interesting to watch and just a step up from Nations League. Which is to be expected. I mean, I love Nations League, I love the idea, I love national teams, but the level of play is just so much better uh, Champions League. Well, let me know which games you watched, what you thought about all the results, um, where things are going. As I said, we have two open groups in the one with Liverpool, Napoli, PSG and Porto, Schalke, Galatasaray. First two probably should make it through. The other one I think is wide open. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.